What's up, everybody? Um, welcome to another episode of my hip hop review. Um, yes, I am actually going to go through my request, and I had a request years ago from um, damn, I forgot this cat's name. I'm sorry, but it's been a while since this person requested me this album. But the album I am about to do today is going to be AC Alone's debut solo album, All Balls Don't Bounce. Released in 1995. Y'all can see that. Yeah. Yeah, of course, I don't have the album. Currently, I don't have the album and stuff like that. So, yeah. Um,. Singles albums known for are Mike Check and The Greatest Show on Earth, and the label this was released on is Capital. AC Alone is a member of Freestyle Fellowship, uh, which was like a West Coast hip hop group. Um, well, yeah, West Coast hip hop group based from Los Angeles. Um, yeah, so AC Alone, based from Los Angeles and shit like that, he became part of like the Freestyle Fellowship. Which was based off um, the Project Blowed Collective and shit like that. And Freestyle Fellowship consists of members um, Kai Nine, Peace, P E A C E, and um, Self Jupiter and shit like that. Alright, so the thing about Freestyle Fellowship was that they wouldn't known for that that fast tongue kind of like that fast kind of rapping like evident in like bone thugs and shit but the way they did it they would like add like a lot more scatting towards that shit you know what i'm saying and i have to be quite honest i'm not like the biggest fan of freestyle fellowship surprisingly um i just only heard the second album which i'll talk about in a minute and shit like that so I might be a little bit shaky, shaky and shit like that, but it is what it is. Um, the first album they came out with was To Whom It May Concern. Um, yeah, like, I have not heard anything from the album. I'm sorry and shit like that. But, Inner City Griots, Griots, um, 1993, I did hear some shit from that album. Yeah, that was a pretty cool, that was a pretty cool album and shit like that. Um... And the thing about what made a Freestyle Fellowship kind of influential was that them, alongside, like, Farside, they were, like, known for doing, like, a West Coast alter an alternate to West Coast hip-hop and shit like that. And but I think, like, Freestyle Fellowship was, like, more out there as opposed to, like, Farside. And that's saying something and shit. Anyway, um... <clears throat> then... They had to go on like a hiatus and shit like that because um Self Jupiter he actually got locked up and shit. But that same year, um, I, I think like ninety four, they um appeared on the Project Blow compilation and while on hiatus he had um left the label I Island and he went to Capital because he wanted like more mainstream success and so that's when he was working on All Balls Don't Bounce. Alright, so producers include the Nantz, um, which you guys should know who the Nantz are. They're like an underground, another underground like West Coast hip hop and shit like that. Um, it consists consists of members Yusuf and and Yusuf and um Sack. Uh, rest in peace to Yusuf because he actually died in two thousand. He actually died in 2000 and shit, and his death is, like, a source of controversy because it's, like, foul play. People think it's, like, a foul play and shit like that, but that's another story for a different day. Um, yeah, Punish, Big Cop, Chillin' Villain, Empire, Mumbles, AC Alone himself, and Fat Jack. Um, yeah, so, 15 tracks... Let's get started. Track number one, All Balls. 
that's a nice way to begin this whole album. Nice jazzy beat from um the nonsense shit like that. You can tell it's nonsense because the way those horns hit. Oh my god, like very dope song. Um what I got from that song is that when you're talking about balls, you're talking about how people th- like when you talk about all balls don't bounce, like don't think that people are all the same and shit like that, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. That's what I got from All Balls. Um track number two, um, Anywhere You Go. Um, Punish, he did the beatbox. He was beatbox on the song two. Um, that's a pretty cool song and shit like that. Kinda like an old fashioned little hip hop track. Track number three, Deep and Wide Deep and Wide featuring Abstract Rude. Um, that song was pretty okay and shit. Um Track number four, Mr. Outsider. Um Pretty much one of my favorite songs off this album. It's just saying how you should always stay original. Don't always go for Don't always change yourself to impress people and shit like that. Because people come and go as opposed, you know, like all balls and shit like that. So, very dope, very dope song. Um, yeah. Um, track number five, Anna Lilia. That's a pretty cool ass. I love that song. It's like a love song, but he's talking about how he met this girl at a club by the name of Anna Lilia and shit like that. And he was drunk and he was fucked up basically and he was trying to impress her. She she basically was like turned she was like turned off by his uh she was turned off by his behavior and shit like that. And next thing you know it, he sees he sees her again a couple like weeks later and shit like that. And basically what had happened was he tried to like spit some game wanted to start over with her, but she basically was all like like she just said, nah, fuck that shit. Like she basically said, I got a boyfriend and I got a girlfriend and a couple of rugrats and a cat. Like basically in other words, what I got from that song, besides, like, don't do it too much, was, like, not every pretty thing. Everybody has the badge. That's basically what I got from that. So, that's a pretty cool song. I love the beat. That beat alone is just so smooth, so smooth, and so jazzy, jazzy and shit like that. Nods definitely did their thing with that one. Um, yeah, Anna Lilia. Definitely one of my favorite songs off the project. Um, track number six, No Knots, featuring Abstract Rude and Mecca 9. Um, that song was okay. I wasn't really too big on that one either. Um, track number seven, uh, Rhythmaticalist. I don't know. I keep thinking I'm fucking that shit up, but uh, Rhythmaticalist. That's a very cool song. Very trippy song and shit like that. Um, Chillin' Villain Empire, he produced that song, and I love the the Nightlighter sample that he used for that, and shit like that, like, he was, AC Lone was saying some shit, like, the freedom of your imagination that must have been a fixation with blocks, like trying to make a wheel out of rock, like trying to make a puppet out of sock, see, I got that private stock that, the personal vat, with the broth and gravy and the electrons to pass on so the world don't seem so wavy like his fucking wordplay in this so dope and shit like that. Um that was a rhythm matter or whatever. Uh Shrek number eight, um The Greatest Show on Earth. That song that song is another good song. Um it kinda like has like a circus feel to it in my opinion but yeah um track number nine mike check which was the first single off the album greatest show being the last single um in my opinion that has got to be the, like the most conventional song on this album and shit like that and this is a pretty cool song you know ac alone ripping it on the mic it kind of reminds me of the Beastie Boys past the mic from Check Your Head a little bit, but 
Yeah, very, very cool song and shit. Um, track number 10, Call It Cali, which was kind of like a little skit. It runs for about a minute. And it leads into Headaches and Woes, which is like my second favorite song off that album. Love that exile from that beat, that dun 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 I got a head full of woe. Like, I got a head full of headaches and a heart that's full of woes. And I'm constantly singing them down home blues. Like, just the way he was flowing, his cadence and shit like that. Like, listen to this shit. Um, let me see. Now, in my natural habitat, I gravitate towards having that, and I elevate on having that, and I never get caught in your, ha in your rabbit trap. From Yellowstone to Venezuela, Nigeria down to Austria, Nigeria down through Australia, there's something I learned that I gotta tell you. There's a whole lot of us ain't trapped too tight. Like, his flow and cadence on that song was so unique. Like, headaches and woes, damn. Um, track number 12, I think. Which was another like kind of short song where AC alone produced. Um, track number thirteen, Makiba. Oh my God, this is my favorite song off this project. Makiba, dun, 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 dun. like it's like it's not a love ballad, as I quote, but it is a slow song. <laughs> so he's talking about this chick named Makiba. And McKee, the way he describes her, like, this is the genius of the song. The beginning, he describes her have, like, a homeful relationship. You know, you know, it's been a long time since I met you. And then, once he said, at least he could have dropped a letter or a phone call, the beat changes and the tone kind of changes. Like, to a somewhat, not, I wouldn't say, like, a dark tone. Well, compared to the rest of the album, it is dark. But it's not like, oh my god, like dark, where it's just like crazy shit, you know what I'm saying? But it just gets to the point where and it gets to the point where like he's just saying like basically he's basically re reading her, okay? He's basically just reading this chick. And my favorite part of this song where is it at? It's when, just this whole line, he's like, I remember one time when he hit my stash and saved my ass from that one time. I remember some fools who had jumped me and you jumped up before anyone did. We used to save and when we get made, we'll have kid after 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 kid. Damn, that's a lot of kids. Makiba. Like that, that line, I just love this whole song, like. Just the genius of basically reading this chick and without like really being vulgar with it, um, to the beat switches, um, yeah, the wordplay definitely feels like something you would definitely hear on the Lyricist Lounge, the Ruckus Records, the Ruckus Records Lyricist Lounge album, which I need to be, I need to get my hands on some Ruckus shit though, but. Yeah, Makiba, fucking classic song. Mumbles, he did his thing on the beat. Um, the last two songs, B Boy Kingdom and Keeping It True, both produced by Fat Jack. Those were both cool. Um, B Boy Kingdom featuring Abstract Rude, Mecca Nine, and Peace. Um, and Keeping It True featuring Abstract Rude again and Change of Rhythm. Both of those were cool. But I felt like it kind of ran for a bit too long and shit like that. They weren't really my favorite tracks on the album. Alright. Overall, overall, um, this album right here is a very good album. Definitely a very in dope, influential album. Very slept on. I always feel like AC Alone does not really get the credit he deserves at times, you know. In my opinion, this might sound controversial, but... If there was no AC alone, there would have been no, like, most deaf, like, diggable planets and shit like that, you know. Just, like, you know, that whole, how can I put it, like, that whole, like, soulful, like, the jazz, like, the spoken word kind of poetry. It's like, spoken word would not be as evident in hip-hop if it wasn't for, like, AC alone and freestyle fellowship and shit. 
And even with Kendrick Lamar, too, with the Pimp to Pimp a Butterfly album, a lot of cats say that, oh, he was the first nigga to scat. 1995, like 20 years before Pimp a Butterfly, to be exact. AC alone was doing it on... Well, actually, not even 20 years before. Take it back to Freestyle Fellowship and shit. And I love to pimp a butterfly, you guys should know, but I gotta give respect what respect is due. Now, I do feel like this album kind of goes a bit too long. I do feel like that. I felt like it should have ended with Makiba, in my opinion, but that's not to say, like, even the ba- even like the song where I kind of was like, eh, about... It's not, like, bad. It just felt like it was just... The album was just so good and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So... Also, I like how lyrically versatile AC Alone proved on the album and shit. Yeah, very dope album. I love this album. Um, in, two, in 2004, the OG copy is actually out of print, but they re-released it in 2004, and it's actually retitled um, All Balls Don't Bound to Revisited. And, yeah, Project Blow at Blow actually released, re-released it. And it comes with a bonus disc of, like, remixes, unreleased tracks and shit, so that's pretty dope, too, but it still kind of goes for a, a bit too much money. Not, like, expensive, expensive, but the most you'll see it go for, in my opinion, will be, like, 24, 25 bucks. That's just being honest, and, yeah. And that is AC Alone with, um, All Balls Don't Bounce. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'm going to actually do the Fuji's Blunt on Reality review tomorrow night, maybe about 12.31 and shit like that. So yeah, alright, this is your boy Reg, peace.